What's up, y'all? We're here. I got Colton, Big Ben's. You guys wanted Colton to be the first one out of the recovery house to share his story long form, and so we're meeting that request. Um, if you're new here and you're just tuning in, Colton really caught on fire, and his story started being looked at when he had to turn himself in clean and face the wreckage of his past. And so people really got interested in your story, and they wanted to know who is Colton Ben's. So now's our chance. Let's let them know. Who is Colton Benz, man? Well, um, you know, I grew up in Saline County. Um, I came from a broken home, really, uh, to be honest. My, my dad was a dope cook. My mom went to prison, um, you know, which left a child to raise another child. So I didn't really have much of a life uh, growing up. Um, started drug addiction at a very young age, at the age of 11. Um, you know, methamphetamines, weed, drinking, stuff like that. I was trying to just, you know, escape the reality that I was an adult at such a young age. You know what I mean? Well, you were a kid acting like an adult for sure. Yeah. How, how does an 11 year old get a hold of methamphetamine? Uh, my older brother. Uh, I have an older brother who's three years older than me. One day um, I skipped school and he's my stepbrother. So um, he's like, okay, well, I'll be over there in a little bit. And he always hung out with older people. Well, when they showed up at the house, um, I wasn't there, I was at Josh's house. And then I come outside, I seen his truck and I went over to the house and I just walked in on them, um, you know, doing a bunk. And uh, I was like, what is that? And he's like, come here, I'll show you. And that's how it all started, you know? So when you say doing a bump, what does that look like? What does that mean? Uh, doing a shot. Shot of dope. At 11, he injected you yeah. with methamphetamine. You're an 11 year old kid that gets a syringe stuck in him. Yeah. How does that alter your life at that point? I mean, the only thing I can tell you is that I, I went on a ride, man. You know what I mean? I bro, that is heartbreaking, bro. Yeah. Little 11 year old Colton mm -hmm. getting a syringe put in your arm. And then the criminal justice system probably doesn't even consider any of these factors when looking at you. No. My addiction started before that, in my opinion, from the, from the trauma and the abuse that my dad put me through. You know what I mean? Like, he would always get me up in the middle of the night. He'd say, come on, you're going with me. Um, Why he would go do his runs. And sometimes he would go to the bar in Little Rock and I would go with him and sit outside while he drank and I would drive him home. Uh, one time he, um, he took me out to this place in Trashwood and long story short, left me there for three days by myself. It was an abandoned trailer. You know what How I mean? How old were you? I was nine. That is... It was out in the middle of nowhere. He said, I'll be right back. And um, like Were you that, scared? I was terrified at first. Do you remember what you did the whole three days you were there alone? Uh, I built a fire. I know that. How? Uh, I had a lighter. I mean, there was a bunch of stuff at the house. At the, at the, at the, it was a trap trailer. You know what I'm saying? Like the back part of it was no, off. You there know was nobody saying? there. No. Well, you didn't eat or anything? No. That's devastating, Colton. Yeah. So... How old are you when you first get in trouble? The first time I ever got in trouble, I was 18. I was 18. That's amazing that you made it till you were 18 before you had legal troubles. Yeah. Well, I just, you know, I wasn't really the best in school, but I tried. You know what I'm saying? My focus my whole time was my brother. You know what I mean? Little brother. My little brother. That you know? you're trying to raise. Yeah. You know? And uh, you're using too. So are you passing those negative lifestyles yeah. down to him? He never knew. He uh, he never knew. I mean, we smoked weed together, but he never knew I was doing, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I mean? So. So you don't have any trouble in school with law enforcement at all? No. You're 18? Until I'm 18, yeah. What happens when you're 18? Um, this, um, this kid beat up my little brother, you know what I'm saying? Beat up Devin, and he was like 27. And I was just going to his house to tell him, uh, you know, just leave him alone. He's a little skater punk kid. And when he opened the door, he just hit me and I just lost it. And I entered his house. And the next thing I know, I'm getting, um, assault and battery and uh, residential burglary. Residential wow. burglary is a class B felon. Yeah, for sure. It was. But I had the opportunity <clears throat> to, um, you know, Act 346. And I got all that stuff expunged off my record. So for the viewers, tell them what Act 
346. Uh, you have a chance to get your felonies expunged off your record as long as you complete the conditions of the court. I had my first daughter um, by that time. Uh, you know, I was always a high functioning addict, Jimmy. I could, I, you know, my resume speaks for itself, the places I've worked and who I've worked for. Um, I've always been a high functioning addict. I've always been able to hold down a job up till, you know, uh, these past three years, four years. Um, I was always working. Uh, me and my uh, the mother of my children, we had uh, our first daughter, Jaylee. We had our own little three bedroom house. Um, I was working. I had two jobs. Uh, I was trying to stay as far away from, you know, my father and stuff as I could, but it was damn near impossible. So at what age did your substance use start? 11. And when, how old were you when you stopped? 32. That's 20 years of using drugs. Yeah. Man, I, I always knew what I needed to do. I just, I couldn't, man. I tried, you know what I mean? I tried a few times, um, but it just had, you know, I've never been to prison, right? But I've been locked up my whole life because I've always felt, you know, that if I don't have this, I can't maintain a normal life, you know, controlled chaos. I mean, yeah, you saw a lot of drug use all your life. Yeah. So did mom use drugs too? Yeah. Never around me though. Right. So what did she go to prison for? Um, embezzlement. Oh, wow. Mom was getting down. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's a little different than like cooking dope or stealing. You know? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I've met your mom. Yeah. And she seems to have it together pretty good. Oh, yeah. She has her own business, um, her own floral company. So, okay. so she found recovery and turned her life around too. Mm -hmm. She went to Serenity Park in, uh, in Little Rock. Okay. Yeah. Serenity Park's a good treatment center. We just got a new guy from there today. Okay. So Colton gets ready to find a new lifestyle. What's your first thing? When you decide enough is enough, what happens? I am in a spot where I told myself I would never be, which is back with my father. And I was actually not using for like four or five days prior to this. Um, so you put together four or five days clean? Yeah, I did. Uh, was that hard to do? Yeah, it really was. I was just watching him those few days, and I was like, dude, you've told yourself your whole life that you're not going to end up like him and seeing how miserable and how dependent on everything and everybody and, you know, point the finger it's not my problem, it's everyone else's problem. And then when I go look in the mirror, I'm like, that's exactly what the fuck you're doing right now. Being the man you hated most. Yeah. I can relate to that. I remember hating, you know, my dad for shooting dope and I hated needles and I hated what it was doing to him. And then I ended up being the very thing that I despised the most, mm -hmm. you know. Most definitely. So you get four or five days clean and you come to this recollection that this is not the life you want. What do you do at that point? Mind you, this is, this will be the fourth time that I've gone to rehab, you know? Uh, the first time I went to rehab was in 2017. I did that just for the simple fact that because my baby mama wanted me to go. I didn't go because I wanted to go or because I thought I needed to go. I went to appease somebody else. Um, relapsed my first day out. Uh, at the time I was addicted to, uh, methadone really bad because uh, my mom's a cancer patient she gets you know her prescriptions so it was really bad like that part of my life that I, you know that's a big reason why I lost my my kids um, and uh, the woman that I love and everything I had a really nice house in Bella Vista um, on a golf course a really good job and I just threw it all away for uh, for pills I could just never kick the dope you know what I mean I could just never get rid of the dope for some reason. I just felt like I needed it. I had to have it. And I was, you know, scared of what I maybe would be or scared of what my life would become if I didn't have it. And that was my that was my escape, you know. Other people would be like, just smoke some weed. I'm like, no, I don't want to. I never went, you know, like some of your stories that you've told me or some of the stories of the guys at the house. I just never did that shit. You know what I mean? Because I, I had someone that I had to, try to take care of yeah so 
You go to rehab for your fourth time, mm -hmm. and what's that look like? I was in there, and I was going to church, and I just, I just, I just felt God just put His hand on my shoulder one day and was like, "Everything's gonna be okay." And I got saved, and honestly, when I came up out of that water, Jimmy, I just felt like everything that I've held inside, everything that I've carried on my back, all the secrets, all the trauma, all the drama, everything was just left right there in the water. I, I, I mean, I really can't explain it, man. So you literally had a spiritual experience in treatment. Mm -hmm. Probably not a lot of people can say that. Yeah. And, you know, my mom always told me, you need to get right with the Lord. You need to get right with the Lord. I'm like, me and him have our own relationship. That was always my answer. Yeah. You know what I mean? Your go-to. Yeah. That was always my answer. And um, I don't know. I'm getting chills thinking about it right now. Um, it, it's it, Since that day, I'm not going to say I haven't had a thought. Yeah. You know? But I have not had any urge, any want, any want to to, use. to go back to that life, man. So you graduate rehab, you, you mm -hmm. finish treatment. What does that look like? Where do you go then? I came to y'all. Came to us. That's how we got you. Next yeah. step. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what does life look like now? Even though you're in a sober living house, a recovery residence, what's an everyday life for Colton look like right now? Well, I'm going on the longest I've ever been clean in my entire life. I'm going on seven and a half months now. I have a full-time job that I actually enjoy. I can actually wake up at four o'clock in the morning, drink some coffee, get dressed and go to work. And I'm, I'm smiling about it. You know what yeah. I mean? It's, it, it's me. Well, you used it's, to not even be asleep at four in the morning. No, so, <laughs> no. So the no. fact that you're waking up is progress. Yeah. Yes, most definitely. Yeah, for sure. I get it. But the, you know, at the house, the, the camaraderie, if I said that word right. Camaraderie, yeah. Yeah. You know, the love, the structure the rules you know what i mean like i've always lived by my own rules in my own ways and it just it never worked and didn't get you nowhere good no yeah. you know so i'm taking suggestions from people who have done this before and um i mean my life is pretty good today i have no, the complaints i have today are nothing compared to you know what my complaints used to be Obviously, you like working out because this is the first video you've had a shirt on ever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you feeling a little awkward there? A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> yeah. It's okay, though. So, okay. Are there any aspirations uh, to maybe do that? I've always wanted to be like a physical trainer or a physical therapist or, you know, something, something along that line. Um, I was always told growing up in certain, when I was like at the Boys and Girls Club and stuff like this when I was in high school that I should be a coach, you know what I mean? Um, and I really enjoy uh, fitness, everything about it, what it does to the body, what what the body can transform into from, you know. From looking like me to looking like you. Yeah, yeah. Can I, can I if I started working out right now? Yeah, we could get it done. We can get it yeah, done. We, we can get it done. Boy, y'all be in trouble. See, God knew who to give what to, because if I – Ran around Clarksville looking like you guys do, people would be in trouble. <laughs> I would go to church with my shirt off. You'd go to church with your shirt off. Yeah. Yeah. So if you could travel back, if you could go back in time right now and talk to 11-year-old you, mm. what would you tell that little boy who was trapped in isolation in an atmosphere of abandonment and drug addiction? Honestly, Jimmy, I don't know what I would tell because even though I've seriously been through so much shit in my, you know, in my entire life, like stuff we haven't even discussed, um, I wouldn't change any of it because if I was to alter that or change anything, it, I wouldn't be the person I am today. And, you know, I really like the person. I really, I can look in the mirror. I went from taking all the mirrors down into my house to now I can't stay out of the mirror. <laughs> Proud, I get you know it. I mean? You're proud of yourself. What is Colton's vision for your life one year from now? You know, healthy, uh, gain a little bit of weight. You know, a little bit more weight. Um, beefcake. Yeah, well, not beefcake, but just you know, just, just, just you know, just a little bit more. Hopefully, follow more into um, the the um, the physical trainer part. Uh, see what I can do in that area. Um, and just stay right where I'm at, you know, uh, because I've always moved around and gone here and gone there and gone there and just 
not trust God's timing. So, you know, I'm right where I'm supposed to be at. Yeah, for sure. Do you think being in a recovery house helped you get to the mindset that you're at? Yes. How important was that? That's that's everything. I mean, I mean, it's it, it, by, by sitting down, shutting up, and actually listening to somebody and not thinking I know everything and not thinking, oh, well, I can do it this way or I can do it that way. No, I'm going to do exactly, you know what I'm saying? If I can put the same amount of energy as in the chase in that bag as I can my recovery. Yeah, you're good. Yeah. Okay, so one last question, and this is the most important question everybody watching this wants to know. What? Who does Colton Benz love more, Jimmy or Chelsea? Oh, gosh. <laughs> Jimmy, you can do 